Moolah La is brought to you by the nonprofit credit counseling agency, Credit Canada. If you know someone heading off to university, to college, wherever, post-secondary somewhere, you might be looking at that cost and thinking, surely there is more uh, help out there. You may be on the lookout for things like scholarships and bursaries, but there are a lot, a lot, a lot, and it can be really hard to find, um, find the right ones to apply to, find the ones that fit. Scholarships Canada is a platform that is trying to uh, make that search easier for you, putting various scholarships online by school, etc. And so we're going to talk about how that works. Logan Bright is the managing editor with Scholarships Canada, and he joins us now. Hello there. Hey there. Thanks so much. So how does the website work? Yeah, great. So basically, Scholarships Canada is an index or a database of awards aimed primarily at Canadian students, though that's not hard and fast rule. Uh, what we do is our best uh, to index awards from common and uncommon sources and lay them out in a consistent way that makes them easier to search and easier for our tech to sort of match a user to a given scholarship. What is the info that you would ask a, uh, a, the person applying for? I assume, you know, name, uh, what program of interest, university of choice? Yeah, there's almost a hierarchy to it, and you've nailed some of the big ones. Um, and they're the ones that students are often sort of first thinking about, right? I want to study biology at the University of Carleton, Carleton University, excuse me, and okay, what do they offer? Uh, and that part is great, but what a lot of students and parents don't know uh, is that there are awards for all sorts of other factors. Uh, so we dig a little deeper than just sort of field of study and location uh, into things like activities and affiliation, even sort of heritage or personal circumstances. Uh, lots of big and little factors of any given person's unique biography that might uh, you know, connect them to an award, whether that's sort of ice hockey or skateboarding or ringette or vocal choir music, um, all sorts of different things. How many are we talking about? Like if I were to go and count every single scholarship that you had information on, what would it be? Is it 500? Is it 5,000? Ooh, much more than either. We're talking tens of thousands. I don't have really? the exact. Yeah. Wow. Really. Uh, no that's idea. from many years of um, digging through and doing our best to sort of keep those up to date. So new ones. How do you how do you do that? How do you keep them up to date? I mean, it, we live in a world of AI. Do you have some sort of crawler that goes out and uh, updates and adds new ones, or how does that work? Uh, yeah, great question. And the AI is something we're exploring, but haven't implemented it yet. Uh, we do it the old fashioned way with a small team of remote editors, as well as a couple of on site folks uh, who we sort of assign to a given project or sphere, uh, you might say, that they will then hit Google company websites, school websites, et cetera, and dig through what's available and add them through the sort of proprietary portal that we've built on the back end. What's the dollar value on range here? So I can imagine some are like, wow, it's a you know a thousand dollar entrance scholarship for a BIPOC student from the Maritimes would be, I completely made that one up, but then there are ones that are probably much, much higher than that. Yeah, absolutely. I think the numbers we crunched last year had our average or median award amount around 2,500 Canadian. Mm. Um, but you're right, a lot of awards are in that sort of $1,000 range. Um, but some are even smaller than that. You might see small awards for 250 or 500 bucks from maybe a community organization. And we encourage students kind of not to turn their nose up at them uh, because $500 here, $250 there mm -hmm. can add up. And it's certainly preferable to slugging out those hours on a sort of minimum wage job. 
Uh, on the flip side, though, there are some awards that are 10K and above. Uh, the higher the dollar value, the more sort of competition you're likely to mm. encounter. Uh, Canada, in particular, doesn't offer too many sort of full ride scholarships, quote unquote, uh, but there are a few really massive programs of 60, 70, $100,000 a year. Uh, but again, you've got to be really the cream of the crop if you're going to snag one of those. Now, I can imagine that this is the kind of service that some sort of government body would support. You're not that. How do you make your money? Yep, um, you're right. We're a private outfit. Uh, we've got ads on the site that any user will see. Uh, we also have what we call featured scholarships. So these are sort of advertisement placements from universities or companies who are looking to get more eyeballs on a particular listing. So whether that's the award is undersubscribed or it's brand new, they're trying to get the word out. Um, we've got the reputation and the audience to sort of make that connection. So we will uh, sort of promote specific awards with um, our audience as well on the homepage, as well as some emails that we'll send directly to students to let them know. Uh, but crucially, the site itself is entirely free for students, counselors, parents, anybody to use, uh, as long as you're okay with ads um, or have an ad block. What do the application requirements look like? And I ask because in the world of job search, it used to be hard. You'd see a classified ad, you'd write up a customized cover letter, you'd send them their resume, their, your resume, and then they'd vet from there. In the world of Indeed.com, you can push like one button, two buttons, and uh, the employer is flooded with applicants. Is there some gating when it comes to scholarships? Are the things that you need to do so that they're ensuring that at least you're in the game before you apply? Uh, yeah, it really depends on the award, and it goes kind of back to the admin's goals in a lot of cases, whether they are looking for maximum volume of applicants or whether maybe they'd want fewer actual applicants of a very particular quality. So it, it does depend on the program. Uh, broadly, we are seeing some of the sort of Indeed-esque application platforms coming into vogue. Uh, we have one, other outfits have them, uh, where we can host the actual, uh, the actual program, excuse me, to handle all of the documents sort of internally and make subsequent applications easier. Uh, so we are seeing some of that as well as Google Forms, SurveyMonkey's got a similar thing. Uh, so it, yeah, it really depends on the scholarship admin. A lot of folks are looking for sort of how would this award impact you and your community type uh, essays or mm -hmm. personal statements, videos, that kind of thing. Uh, so we offer advice to students on how to craft um, a sort of boilerplate personal statement and essay and reference letter, one or two, so that when they find that award that requires something like that, they're prepared to apply and not trying to pull all that stuff together from scratch. Well, I was going to ask you, uh, tell us a bit more about some of the other resources that you offer. So you've got the, the, the screening tool or the finding tool for these scholarships and bursaries. What else? Um, yeah, that is the, the big selling point, of course, uh, being able to filter or get matched to the specific awards. Uh, we've got a regular email, a sort of monthly reminder of deadlines that are coming up soon. So if I've matched to X, Y, and Z, uh, I can get an email reminding me, hey, you know, the deadline for Z is coming up pretty soon. Don't, don't forget about it. Uh, so that we find is pretty handy, uh, and that's all on top of more standard advice type material, um, examples, FAQs, sort of if you don't know what a bursary is, here's the definition, here's why you might apply for one as opposed to a scholarship. Uh, so trying to really make the whole process more accessible and understandable, comprehensible to users, uh, some of whom are you know, from outside of Canada and aren't necessarily familiar with our system. Many people here are not even. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm, I, let's pretend, okay, Logan, let's pretend I totally know what the difference is between a bursary and a scholarship. But for those out there in our listening audience who may need a bit of a refresher on the difference between 
those two things. How would you articulate the difference between a scholarship and a bursary? Yeah, so scholarship gets thrown around as a somewhat generic catch-all term for money for school. Um, more specifically, a scholarship is sort of based on achievement, often academic, sometimes sort of volunteer sports-based in the States especially. Uh, bursary, by contrast, has a more specific meaning, and that is uh, related to financial need. So a bursary is explicitly for folks who have a gap in their financing, uh, whether that's an emergency or, you know, sort of chronic um, bursaries are financial aid based specifically, not grade or achievement based. So that's the broad distinction there. Uh, we could get deeper into the weeds on sort of subtypes of these things, but uh, maybe that's better for the website. Really interesting stuff. L Logan, thank you for taking the time to explain it for us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks so much for having us and uh, have a great afternoon. Logan Bright, Managing Editor at Scholarships Canada. So if you are a student, if you know a student, point them to uh, this kind of filtering tool, and I bet they will learn something new that they didn't even know existed.